Hey, I'm Ralph Wolf Dog Off Grid, and today we're gonna be doing a solar upgrade. Doing it, all right. This solar upgrade is gonna take this bus from a three seasons off grid bus to a four seasons off grid bus. And what I mean by that is currently this bus is set up to take you off grid um, during spring, fall, and summer and have all the DC components running, the fridge, um, fans, lights, things like that. But as soon as you turn the air conditioner on or try and use the air conditioner for heat, the batteries drain down really quick and the solar array is just not quite enough to replenish it in time. So I'm gonna be replacing the AGM batteries with lithium batteries and the 600 watt solar array with a 2000 watt solar array so that this bus can truly be used off grid, off grid with air conditioning, with heat and have basically no limitations. First things first, new batteries. With the batteries, we're swapping from AGM to lithium. And so the old AGM batteries are, they're really nice batteries. They're no maintenance and um, they're no maintenance. So the AGMs already in this bus are really nice batteries. However, you're only supposed to drain AGMs to about 80% before you're causing damage and 50% if you're really maintaining good practice with them. And that's kind of just a nuisance if you don't want to always be watching your battery level. So we're gonna upgrade it with lithium and these batteries are super cool. You can drain them all the way down to zero, so no worries there. And they have a 10 year warranty. So even though lithium may be a bit more pricey than lead acid or AGMs, you're getting a 10 year warranty with them and you can drain them all the way down to nothing. So this entire battery capacity is usable. Um, super cool. These, if you're looking at different lithium batteries, I'm sure you've come across things like Battleborns. Uh, the easy way to kind of compute this is one of these batteries, these Serverac EG4s, is worth about four of your traditional Battleborn batteries. Um, they each have 5.12 kilowatt hours of storage. Uh, incredibly huge, and it's all in one BMS. So we're gonna install three of these guys, and they are 24 volts. So we're gonna be upgrading from a 12 volt to a 24 volt system here, which leads me to the components because a common thing that I hear is that people are worried about switching from 12 volt to 24 because they're worried about the extra components they'll need. Well, it's a different inverter because it's gonna be a 24 3000 rather than a 12 3000. And the solar charge controller can be smaller because now you have a 24 volt bank by a 12 volt bank. So you can fit more watts of panels per each charge controller. And the only additional component you'll need is a converter. Uh, and that's only if you have 12 volt components, which you probably should in your bus because it's efficient to run it that way. So you need a 24 to 12 step down converter and then that's it. And the only other thing that changes is all your wires become smaller. So it doesn't seem like too big of a deal. With the solar upgrade, I'm gonna be swapping to residential size solar panels. These are hurricane rated, they're bifacial panels. So not only will sunlight be harnessed, will the sunlight energy be harnessed from the top, but when reflected off the roof of the bus onto the back of the panel, you get additional wattage. Super cool feature, especially for those round roofs where when you have that low sunlight situation, a lot of sunlight goes onto the roof and reflects back up to the panel. These are the solar panels we're gonna be taking off the bus. Now, this system would still work great if you had a smaller rig, um, say a van, or you just have really limited use and you're only running 12 volt appliances, nothing major. However, if we got a mini split on this bus, we might as well be able to run it off grid. So these 200 watt panels are going off and we're gonna install some house panels like you might be able to see behind me. Going forward, I'm gonna install rails on either side of the bus full length and that'll allow me to put the residential panels on top with minimal holes in the roof. As you can see here, these panels are mounted with four feet and it just increases the amount of holes and the likelihood of having a leak in the future. The new panels we're installing are 400 watt bifacial panels, which means they're 400 watt, but they have the potential to go up to 500 watts with the sunlight reflected off the roof back onto the back of the panel. Those are really neat because if you have a smaller um, roof side to side or, or whatever, and you're really trying to maximize the amount of watts you can get with the space you have, that gives you the extra potential of the bottom of the panel. It's great for when the sun is on a low angle and you're not quite getting that direct sunlight. It also works really well with white or reflective roofs. Uh, this bus has a lighter color roof. It is pink, but um, I'm curious to see how much additional power we actually get off those bifacials. I will definitely be testing them. So I got some data points here. 
I love some good data points. This is not the ideal way to mount solar panels with individual feet like this, but I can tell you that three years after installing these with just Sika Flex or Dicor, I'm not sure which one I used, and self tappers, it looks like, if you wanna come in close here, this whole mating surface is clean and free of gunk, and we're in the Pacific Northwest, so if there's a spot for grime to grow and penetrate that and start leaking, it will. So as much as this isn't the most preferred way to mount solar panels, it worked, at least for three years. I did put die core on top of each screw too, so meh, something to note. That's all I got, I'm gonna take off the rest now. Solar upgrades can oh, um, solar upgrades can sometimes be really difficult jobs because you don't know where components are or how they're wired in. Fortunately for me, I made this bus several years ago, so I know exactly where everything is, and I know that there's plenty of space to work. Under this bed is a giant panel that I can lift up and when I do, I have full access to all the components and plenty of space to work. I mention that because if you happen to be mid-build or you are thinking about building your RV, make sure that you have room to work around your components and room to access it after the fact because technology is always changing and you might just want to upgrade it in a couple of years. All right, so you'll see here's the old electric system or the existing electric system. You got a Renogy inverter charger, Renogy solar charge controller, a couple of bus bars, all the breakers are accessible from the outside. And now this is, again, a really great system for something smaller where you're just looking to run your DC loads off grid and it's worked great. Um, the previous owner, the customer that I built this for, used it for a year and then used it as an Airbnb after that. And now we're gonna upgrade it for the new owner who has a different use for the bus and really just wants to be able to use this bus with no concerns over power and have this air conditioner without shore power. So let's make it happen. First thing I'm gonna do is remove all these batteries. So in going from AGM to lithium, one thing to note is that the lithium should really be in your people space to keep it warmer which is kind of neat for here because we're gonna get more battery capacity and this is now gonna be a storage compartment for outside gear. All right, jumping in, totally hit stop recording instead of record while taking everything out, but all the old components are out and about to install the new inverter, new batteries. And I wanna take a minute to show you guys the converter. So this guy, is literally all you need to switch from a 12 volt to 24 volt battery bank. And I just wanna show this because it's small. Um, and you put this in before the DC distribution panel. So you go from your 24 volt bank down to 12 volt and you use all the same components, all the same wiring, everything else is the same. This is the only guy that gets added, pretty neat. Um, and yeah, and then you get the benefit of using smaller wires for everything else. Uh, faster charging on your 24 volt battery bank, more solar panels per MPPT because um, you get double, when you double the voltage, you can do double the wattage per MPPT. Pretty cool. And it'll take up basically the same footprint except it'll get way more battery capacity um, per the battery uh, footprint, I guess you would call it. Uh, and that's gonna be really cool. So let's get to it. All right, so as you just saw from that time lapse, the system only takes 8.7 seconds to install. Here we are totally the same day with the system installed, programmed, and up and running. Um, the system actually took up less space than the original one in here with the AGMs, 
We now have 15, roughly 15 kilowatt hours of battery capacity with 2000 watts of solar up top. Um, and with that, you can do some math to discover that it takes about 15 divided by two, 7.5 hours to fully charge your batteries from zero to 100% power, you know, in direct sunlight. And that's a tall ask, but really what we're looking at with this battery bank is that it has reserve power. So if you hit cloudy days for, you know, two, three, four, five days, you can still run your heat and air conditioning off your mini split with capacity left in your batteries. And then you can charge up either via sun on good sunny days or with shore power, alternator power. So that's awesome, um, which means that this bus is about ready to go to its new owner. This bus was one of the first buses I've built for a customer and she used it for about a year. And then it was a Airbnb for a while. And um, now it's going to its new owner who is gonna be taking it all across the United States with all its new gadgets. And you know, really not making any compromises as it comes to power. If you're curious to learn anything more about the system in this bus or maybe a system you're installing, feel free to schedule a consult with me. There's a link below in the description for my Calendly. And also, if you're looking to purchase any EG4 batteries, I do have an affiliate link that you can use. Um, they sell a lot of things solar and those batteries are a heck of a lot of bang for your buck. So highly recommend those. And yeah, until next time with a full tour of this bus before it heads out the door. Yeah. <laughs>